Hello, everyone. Welcome to our pre-reading video uh, for Roald Dahl's Matilda. Uh, this is a real treat for me. Uh, it's such an honor to be able to talk about one of my favorite novels, favorite films, favorite musicals, um, one of the great works that uh, has changed my life. Uh, and has certainly helped me uh, be a better teacher, a better student, uh, a better person. Uh, I know I'm opening this in a different way than normal. Uh, I often try to be um, impartial, uh, enthusiastic, but uh, this is a special topic on education uh, and on this classic uh, youth novel. So I want to start by asking a question that may feel different from uh, other openings uh, or other ways of thinking about this novel. So I want to ask you all, when was the first time you remember feeling small? And I mean small in any number of ways. Uh, have you ever felt intellectually small, physically small, psychologically small, socially small. Um, one of the big things that we learn as children, I think, is that we live in a world in which most things are out of our control. We live uh, in a world in which we really cannot affect much change, that we are quite helpless and sometimes quite hopeless uh, in a big world. But at the same time, I'd like you also to think about what is your first memory of knowing that you have power within yourself to contain and change your world. I don't mean power from the outside. I mean a strong sense of self, of knowing that, yes, the world is a scary place. I am very small. But there's something within each and every one of us to contain the world, to make sense of it, and in our ways to change it. These two questions will guide us in our discussion of the novel this time. So I want to talk a little bit about why the novel, why the story means a lot to me. Uh, Matilda was actually published the year that I was born. Uh, I'm an 80s kid, 1988. I remember when the first uh, trailer came out for the film. Uh, I remember this was one of the first films that uh, had real live children for me. Uh, I grew up watching a lot of animation, um, but Matilda, watching a little girl, uh, a little bit older than me, uh, who had powers to stand up against grown-ups, uh, was really empowering, uh, and a girl. Uh, no less. Uh, boys, I think, uh, are often uh, drawn to superheroes or, or uh, martial arts, uh, different kinds of physical power. But here we have a girl who used her mind and her kind heart to change the world. And that was something that was really inspiring for me uh, personally. Uh, I am not particularly physically uh, uh, powerful or, or, or dominating. Uh, so seeing Matilda on screen was really uh, a life-changing experience for me. And so I encountered the film first before I read the novel. Now, uh, the story of Matilda is a story of childhood. It is a story of growth. Uh, I've asked the question already uh, about feeling small and feeling powerful. I also want to remind you all that this is a story of magic. Uh, and uh, magic uh, does not necessarily have to be supernatural, as I mentioned in our uh, introduction to our reading club meeting. Uh, we don't need supernatural or mysterious forms of magic. We carry the power within ourselves. We have the magic uh, of language uh, and the magic that exists interpersonally, socially. Uh, we have the power of imagination 
and to be kind and to imagine a better world. All these things come from education. There is a magic uh, in education, uh, and that is our theme today. So childhood, magic, uh, and education. So I have three questions. Normally, I probably am not so personal at the very beginning, um, but I find that education is very personal for everybody. Uh, we all have deep memories of going to school. We have memories of our triumphs uh, and our struggles and our challenges growing up in our families, uh, in our friend groups, with our teachers and administrators. But I want to return uh, to a simple few questions here. Uh, and then I will talk a little bit about what I love about the musical and the novel. And then I will let you um, read the novel for yourself. What does it mean? for a child to grow up? And what does it take? The more that I grow older, the more that I work in education, uh, the more that I see children around me, the more I marvel at the fact that growing up is very difficult. Uh, there are all kinds of obstacles and all kinds of things that can go wrong. Every child that grows into adult uh, is loved into being, uh, is invested in by at least one individual, but certainly by a community and a society. It is very difficult to grow up, physically difficult, psychologically difficult, socially difficult, morally difficult, spiritually difficult. What does it mean uh, for a child to grow up and what does it take, especially for us now that we're older and we are adults? What does it take? What has it taken for us uh, as individuals to grow up? Now, one of the most important things about Matilda, uh, as you know, is her ability to learn, her ability to read at a very, very young age. We call this skill literacy. Uh, it's one of the big terms in education. Uh, everywhere in the world, and I just want us to think for a moment, why? Why is literacy um, defined here you know, in its most straightforward form, the abilities to read and write? Why do we consider literacy universally a major goal and a major milestone in primary school, meaning childhood, right? By the age of 12, uh, children should be able to read and write. Why? Why is this uh, considered uh, one of the most important skills uh, any of us, all of us, uh, should gain and are able to gain. Uh, this wasn't always the case, remember. Uh, back uh, centuries ago, the ability to read and write was reserved for the elite classes. You had to have all kinds of social advantages and it wasn't considered uh, a right uh, for every child. But why do we believe this today? Uh, why is it considered today a universal marker, a universal achievement uh, of schooling, uh, of education? And this leads us to a more broad question. What does it mean to truly become educated? What does it mean when we say he's very educated, she's very educated, they are a very educated uh, family or society or community? What does that necessarily mean? mean for us? Does it mean they read a lot? Does it mean they know a lot of things? Uh, what do we associate with this word? What are some things we might have forgotten? And importantly, what does it mean to you? I love Matilda as a story because she reminds me, I hope that she reminds you, that there is power within each of us that there is power within the written world, the, the world of stories, the world of language, uh, the world of books, the ability to uh, pass on important lessons in life, not just knowledge, um, but really uh, wisdom as well, uh, lived experience and uh, wisdom. Uh, I remember going to London for the first time 
uh, my fiance at the time, uh, now my wife, we went to see Matilda. Uh, it was a really wonderful experience. And uh, you really feel that you are transformed by the story. You are hopeful that you know that the power of stories told together, that when you watch the story unfold, uh, or when you read the novel, you will feel that you are empowered. You will feel that it matters less uh, whether the world is filled uh, with things that are beyond our control. Each and every one of us has uh, the power to change our mind, to grow our mind, and to make our world better. And so uh, I will leave you uh, with this, uh, this image, the young girl, uh, Matilda. I hope that you really enjoy reading the novel. Uh, I will be back uh, with more uh, questions and thoughts as we descend uh, into the reading. So thank you all very much.